Dear YouTube, today I want to show you just in minutes how to handle missing data in Python, specifically when you're using Python and Pandas for financial analysis. This really comes in handy. It's the fill forward and fill backward method. But before I do that, I have a favor to ask. YouTube is shutting down small producers like myself for advertising because the blunder of some big guys. So if you can subscribe and give it a thumbs up, that can really help my channel survive this YouTube Amageda. First of all, to demonstrate these functionalities, I have created a data frame called DF3. It looks like this. It is not the best formatted, and you can see it's not really in order, but it will do to demonstrate the functionality of fill forward and fill backward real quick. So let me save a new data frame as this one. Same thing, okay? Now we're going to try the fill forward method first. So you can see I have four, um, not a number here. These are actually the NumPy, not a number. So it's a special um, variable that NumPy has for you to efficiently store empty or invalid data during data processing. And you can go ahead and Panda has all kinds of fill n a n methods to handle this and we're looking at one of them which is fill forwards so double f uh, that is stands to uh, for forward fill i'm going to say in place equal to false just because i want to reuse this again and you see what happened previously in november and february the data is missing fill forward is saying taking the most a uh, recent predecessor and go ahead and fill out my missing data with the value. So 150 here, here, 700 here, and here. So Apple and Google, just for easy to remember. And if I go back to my data frame, everything should stay the same. And now, what if I use the fill backward? And you can imagine that it's just opposite of what we just did. And of course, nothing happens because why? Because there is nothing to fill backward with. Um, these NAN are already at the end of the database. So this becomes very useful when you're calculating moving average of 365 days. So imagine the first 365 days are just empty. You can't calculate the average is not comparable to the rest of the three, uh, year, uh, yearly average you are calculating. So you want to start with the first 365 days as your first average, then you're going to start, um, then you're going to calculate 366 minus uh, day zero or a zero indexing. Let's not go there and minus one errors immediately. So, um, so there is nothing to fill backward yet. So for the sake of demonstration, let's sort the index. It's alpha numerical sort is not a um, fancy daytime sort yet. Boom. And now you can see it's really taking uh, the last item, which is after sorted, it is this one. So if I were to go without the fill forward method because I did not do it in place, I can show you again. So the last entry you can see here is 100 and 500. It basically used that one fill backwards, upwards in this case, um, 100 and 500 here. So as I was saying, when you're using this in finance, it become very useful when the first 365 days need to go with the first calculation or you're missing the last 350 days. Uh, 365 days, right? Depends on how you want to segment your data. So fill forward and fill backward um, methods become very helpful as a pre-data processing methods. And depends on your use case, you might choose one over the other. And I always like to do in place equal to false because the broadcasting method is so powerful, it would change a lot of data and it's hard for you to go back and fix that. So I would want to do a few comparisons uh, just to see that I'm getting things right, and especially with this fill back where you can see it really even depends on how the data is sorted. So it becomes quite tricky, and you want to test that out before you actually do it in place. Thank you for watching, subscribe, and help me out. Thank you.